In this video, we're going to have a look at the dashboard from the perspective of a person using the dashboard to review information rather than the perspective of an administrator configuring the dashboard for use by others. We'll start with just some general information. What we've got across the top are a couple of filters. These are filters that enable you to filter the entire dashboard, all of the graphs on all of the tabs. Below this, we have the tabs themselves into which are added any number of graphs, tables, charts. Whether or not you can do this is really dependent upon your level of access to the system. The graphs themselves that get added to the tabs, you're able, as we'll see in a moment, to hover over and review data, click on the information and see the actual data that underlies the graphical information. And each of these graphs comes with one or more filters that you can use to modify or filter the individual graph. So what we'll start with is these filters right at the top of the dashboard in the left-hand corner. The first one that we've highlighted, Hierarchy, this enables you to select a part of the organization that you happen to work in and choose to only view the data from that part of the organization. And you do this simply by clicking on the drop down arrow, scrolling through the list of hierarchy. You might be in a company that's made up of multiple companies, divisions, departments. And of course, this hierarchy will reflect whatever your company's hierarchy happens to be. We'll choose here the Mount Bryant site. What this now does is filters every graph in the dashboard by that filter. You can see what you're filtered on because the word site has now appeared next to the word hierarchy. This is really important. If you come into the dashboard and you see a limited amount of data, what you have to remember is that you could have previously filtered the dashboard by some value and that you're not seeing everything that is available to you. To reset the data, simply click on the drop down arrow and click on reset. Once reset, the default is supplied again and all of the information from the entire organization is visible. Now the same is true of the show records for option. It defaults to the last 12 months, but has a range of options in here. So if I were to select the previous month, what this is doing is now showing me information that was created within the last month. What you can also do is you can choose a random date range. So if, for example, we were to choose everything from the 1st of May, and instead of what we had previously, we now have the word custom showing next to the show records for. Once again, to remove this, you can click on clear filters. Now below the filters, we have a number of tabs. And in each of these tabs, we have different graphs, charts, tables. You may or may not be allowed, based on your access, to add or remove charts from these tabs. But as you can see, if we click on the different tabs, there are different charts and graphs in each. Now, if we have a look at the individual graphs and charts in a tab, what we'll notice is that for each of them, there is a filter and an export option. So what I can do with this particular graph is I can filter it by the default filters that come with this graph. And in this instance, action type and status are available. So if I click on the upturned arrow, what I can see now is a list of options and I might not be interested in closed actions. I'm really only interested in the open and overdue action. So if I save that set of filters, what happens is the graph redisplays and shows me only filtered information. So now this filter is completely different to the filter that we saw earlier, the ones at the top, because while these operate across the entire dashboard, these in the individual graph only apply to the graph itself. If you look at the word filter, you can see next to it now there's a tick. This is the only way that you can tell that this graph has been filtered. So you need to be on the lookout to make sure that the dashboard is not showing you less information than you want it to, simply because you have filtered the information for some purpose in the past and then forgotten to unfilter it. If we go back and clear that filter, click on reset, and then on save, we can see that the filter icon has changed to the default setting. And each graph will have its own different filters. The other thing that graphs have is an export option. Now what you'll notice if we scroll to the top is that there is an export option at the top as well. And these two do very different things. And the best way to illustrate this is by looking at a table. A table 
is very, very similar to a view that we've been introduced to in previous videos. And as such, it contains most of the functionality that views contain. You're able to drag columns around. You can filter columns. You can set date ranges in the, in the table. And what's more, you can click on the link in any of these columns and open the document that underlies the table that you're looking at. But when it comes to exporting the table, what you want typically is to export the entire table to an Excel spreadsheet. If you want to export a table with data in it, the place to go is in the table itself down to the export option here and click on export to Excel. What you're able to do here is either save it or simply click on the name of the Excel spreadsheet. And once you do that, it will open in an Excel spreadsheet and show you all of the documents that are contained within the view that you're currently looking at or the table that you're looking at inside the dashboard. Now, the last two items that I want to cover in this video are over on the right hand side, the link and report option. As I mentioned before, you may or may not have these, but it's more likely to be a user option than it is to be an administrative option. The first one is link. If we happen to be inside a particular tab, let's say the month end tab, end of month global reports, and we want to send a link to somebody to show them what the end of month global reports look like, we can click on the link tab. We can choose the target tab, end of month global report. We can set the date range, maybe the previous year, and we can choose a hierarchy if we need to. So you can show them the global report for a particular part of the business. And then what you can do is you can copy the URL that appears in this field. Once you've copied it, you can paste that into an email, send that to somebody, and that person will then click on the link and see the information that you have set up in this link option. The last item is the reports. What you might want to do on an ongoing basis is send notifications out to people to say, here's the latest information from the dashboard for your part of the business. And you want to send that monthly, weekly, annually. If you click on reports and click new report, what we can do is give this report a name, type in the subject, type in the email, choose the tab that you want, maybe the end of month global report, choose the date range, previous year, again, choose the hierarchy, select the scheduled running times, so I wanted to send this out annually, and choose, in this case, when I want to send it out. So possibly July the 4th, just after the end of year, the end of financial year. And then you can click add a schedule rule. Now what this does is it adds another rule. So what I've got here is I've got an annual on July, but I might want to send this out annually at some other time as well. So let's say I want to also send it annually, but I want to do this in December. So I'll click on December and I want everyone to have a good Christmas present. So I'll click 25th as well. So now what I've got, I've got two scheduled running times for this particular report. And when I save it, what's going to happen is it's going to go to this recipient at these two times every year. Now, if you look here, what I've got is a number of reports that I've set up previously. And you can have a scrollable list of these reports, as many as you like going to whomever it is that you want them to go to at whatever time you want them to go out. In the video that we're going to watch next, dashboard configuration, we'll have a deeper dive into what the dashboard is about. And we'll have a look at how we can add new tables, new graphs into each of the tabs, and how we can go about configuring our own graphs and tables for the dashboard and setting up our own tabs as we prefer them.